So from the start of this, I've always said that if people had strong ideas for episodes or wanting to have a go at writing a script, I'd be more than happy to look over anything that got submitted. And then out of literally nowhere, I uh, get an email from Sean, you know, our incredibly talented artist, with his idea for an episode. And what he'd come up with worked on a number of different levels. One of the questions we've been most regularly asked since the start of the project was if we were going to expand stories out to time periods other than World War II, with World War I in particular. And that's exactly where Sean had gone with his idea, um, the story of American GI who staggers through a, a time fog onto the battlefield of the Great War and then gets captured by the Germans on his way back again. And this created something of a timely opportunity because one of the other brilliant questions that I was asked during the recent Q&A was if there was going to be any overarching narrative for the project. The answer to that question was no. Um, originally, the idea was to base the series around a British military team investigating the events post-war and have the opportunity to put recurring characters join the team after they've been involved in episodes. But that proved a little bit too tricky to sustain. I've been looking forward, and at the episodes I've already mapped out, there are a couple that are based around either time travel or interdimensional travel. And the idea then occurred to me to have some sort of commonality to those episodes, um, a recurring phenomenon or a mechanism that allowed people to move around through time and space. Uh, and the time fog that Sean had come up with was, was quite similar to an idea I'd already been playing around with. The only thing with the story that we got was that it wasn't really a full episode's worth of material, and it just proved a bit tricky to try and stretch it out to one, which is why off the cuff we've come up with this new idea of a short story format to run alongside the main episodes. It takes Sean about a month to pull all of the art together for a full episode. He can do a short story in half that, so if we run both, it means you guys don't have to wait so long between episodes. And it also means that we can possibly use the format to examine some of the characters we've met in a bit more detail. We've already got a few fan favourites come out of the existing episodes. Some living, some dead, some a bit of both. Uh, and now we've got the potential to examine their backstories or look at what happens to them post-incident without having to do a whole episode on it. But if you haven't sussed by now, I'm a complete control freak, so I couldn't help but play around with what he'd come up with. I wanted to find a way to try and ramp up the scare factor, and the image that kept coming into my head were of the stormtrooper units that the German army used towards the end of the Great War. A 1940s American GI bumping into some of those nasty bastards would, would be something, I think. So I sent Sean a couple of screen grabs, and he was really up for it. I say a couple, I think I spammed him with about 100. Um, now that change meant having to change the setting of the episode, largely because I wanted our protagonist to be anchored to a certain location where there'd been a previous battle between American and German forces. I didn't want him to just pop up in different points all over the world, that just seemed a bit too fantastical to me. Um, but this restriction proved a little bit tricky. Sean had set his piece during the Ardennes, um, we've not long been there and met the Wendigos, uh, and from checking, it didn't seem that there'd been much action between US troops there during World War I. So to find a period where the Americans had fought during both wars, uh, that also took place towards the end of the Great War, where stormtroopers were around, really limited our options, which is how we ended up in Nancy. During World War I, the Marbach sector was one of the first areas that Pershing's Second Army saw service, uh, and it was repeatedly subjected to gas attacks by the Germans. Fast forward to World War II, uh, and as the US Third Army sweeps across France, it was temporarily halted while it tried to take Nancy. Um, as part of this battle, US forces were once again up against the Germans in the woods in Marbach, which proved the perfect setting. The stormtroopers came into being in the final year of the Great War. They were an attempt by the Germans to break the stalemate of trench warfare. They'd been playing around with the idea since 1915, but when Russia left the war, they had a large body of experienced veterans they could switch back to the Western Front. These men were given the freedom to adapt their weapons and their uniforms as they pleased, um, and their officers had autonomy to act as they saw fit to break the British lines. And it was immediate success. Um, stormtroopers would creep forward under a barrage, 
uh, and then just erupt into the British trenches and, and they met very little resistance from rank and file British troops. But a little bit like in World War Two, it was too little too late. Events had already overtaken the stormtroopers and the German army surrendered the following year. You should, if you're a fan of this channel, know what a Sherman tank is. I can't see why you'd be here otherwise. But if you're wondering what a Hellcat was, uh, it was a specially adapted tank destroyer. It was more lightly armoured than the Sherman, uh, and a lot faster, with an open turret to improve visibility. And when the Hellcat was introduced, it was an immediate success in 1944. It was just too fast and too manoeuvrable for the Germans to be able to hit effectively. The model also saw service during the Korean War, where the chassis had the turret removed, and they used it as a high-speed transport for evacuating the wounded from the front lines. I feel like I end up saying it for every video that we put together, but the shot of the four commandos that Sean has done is his best work yet. Um, as I say, I, I must have spammed him with every photo I could find of a stormtrooper, um, and he perfectly captured the gas masks, the horror behind the eye panes, uh, and the weapons into that image. That's a signature image for the channel, the way I see it. One of the things we're lining up in future is another Q&A, uh, which I'm hoping can have both of us on it this time. So have a think if you've got any questions about the art he's done so far, or how he does it, because I mean, to be fair, I've got no idea how he does it. Um, I'll be asking for submissions fairly soon for those questions. Um, don't expect much. It's probably going to be like watching two granddads try and work an iPhone. Like Neither of us is massively technically minded, um, so it might actually be funnier rather than informative. Um, there probably won't be a short after the next episode, um, but there is one planned after that. I don't want to be a tease. Who am I kidding? Of course, I want to be a tease. Um, it's going to be uh, the backstory of one of our previous bad guys. I think you can probably guess who. Um, and Sean's also come up with an idea for another standalone set during the invasion of Italy, um, which is very Lovecraftian. That's all I'll say. Um, anyway, if you have any comments or feedback on the new format, let us know. Hopefully, it's a bit more accessible and you can find 15 minutes to watch it rather than having it set half an hour aside. Um, and I want to be able to use it to, to flesh out the shared universe we've created. Shared universe, I say it like to the MCU or something. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm wittering now. Um, as ever, thank you for supporting the channel. Um, if you want to go over to the Patreon page, episodes will be posted a week early on there from now on. Uh, and there'll also be bulletins of what we're planning to do in future uh, and maybe some artwork on there as well. And where that goes, who knows? Thank you for watching and see you later.